tracing its roots back in 1901 for the then Bureau of Government Laboratories, which became the Bureau of Science. The Department of Science DOSD ITDI has been a vital instrument in establishing the research and development agenda in the country. It was 1958 when the Bureau of Science became the National Institute of Science and Technology NIST, that industrial R&D started gaining ground while harnessing local resources and skills from the self-sufficiency agenda and optimized productivity. It was 1958 when industrial R&D went to gear in 1987 when the NIST was renamed Industrial R&D started gaining ground in a vital while harnessing focusing on four major functions research and development and optimized productivity. Technical services are in the national gear in 1997 when the NIH technology transfer and technology are in the institute and custodian of the national units of measure research to provide international traceability. DOSD ITDI research and development covers five major areas when the NIH technology transfer and technology are in environment and biotechnology and the national units of measure research to provide international traceability. DOSD ITDI research and development covers five major areas material science and packaging technology, all aimed at supporting and answering the needs of local industries. Complementing its RD are its technical services, standards and testing, national metrology, and technology transfer aimed at harnessing local industries' productivity and competitiveness and translation of developed knowledge or innovation into the production sector, paving the way for new businesses or startups. As well, DOST ITDI innovations serve as springboards for businesses to thrive and prosper. In support of the administration's thrust in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST interventions are anchored on the theme, Agama Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at kinabukasan. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, and when most of the country was in enhanced community quarantine, DOST ITDI bravely rose to the call of duty, distributed ready-to-eat foods such as the Pack of Hope, and mung bean cocoa milk drink to our frontliners in Metro Manila and other regions in the country. Produced face shields via 3D printing and donated these to hospital frontliners developing prototypes and 3D printing critically important parts of hospital equipment and improved design of N95 masks to better protect the frontliners. The Institute is also providing interventions for our displaced countrymen who lost their jobs and livelihood by making training available online whenever necessary. And even before this pandemic, DOSD ITDI innovations were critical in rehabilitating communities that experienced calamities and even war and make them whole again. DOSD ITDI has been preparing for an innovative ecosystem for new knowledge and technology to thrive and help make us ready for Industry 4.0. DOSD ITDI aims to achieve kaayusan and to certain the future or kinabukasan through its initiatives and help businesses and every Filipino adapt to COVID-19 under the new normal. State-of-the-art facilities are being established. Construction of the Simulation Packaging Testing Laboratory, SPTL, and Green Packaging Laboratory, GPL is ongoing. At the SPTL, stress conditions that affect products during transport are simulated that can help mitigate losses during distribution. While produced, products can be processed and packed in a green packaging laboratory. AMSIN or the Advanced Manufacturing Center, DOSD's 3D Printing Technology Center, is a joint project with Metals Industry Research and Development Center, MIRDC. ITDI focuses on developing multiple 3D printing materials from local materials to reduce costs. Halal Food Research and Development Facility With this facility in place, the Institute hopes to develop new food products that are compliant to halal standards and as well support DOST as it responds to Republic Act No. 10817 or the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Act. Enhancement of the competence and capabilities of the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines Expertise and facilities are being upgraded and construction of laboratory facilities for metrology and chemistry and biology are now ongoing. It is envisioned that the animal will provide the country with credible measurements, 
and traceability in the fields of physical, chemical, and biological metrology. And with the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, DOST response has been decisive, with the support of President Duterte and the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, the DOST will establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, or VIP, to be constructed at the new Clark Economic Zone in Capas, Tarlac. The VIP shall be pursuing priority virology research and developing diagnostic kits, therapeutics, and vaccines for diseases caused by viruses, where DOST ITDI will have a critical function. From the Industrial Technology Development Institute of the Department of Science and Technology, through the years which turned 119 last July, has been consistently providing innovations to industry to help make them competitive, emerging as a credible industry partner. The Institute improving the lives of disaster victims and communities to rise again. With so much optimism with this cooperation and bridging of talents and expertise, we look forward to enhance science, technology, innovation, competitiveness, and the emergence of new research and development capabilities that hopefully will translate into new products and services that meet the current future needs of our nation and the people. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. We are to present the Industrial Technology Development Institute or DOST ITDI Technical Services for Industries. I am Rose Ponto from the Technological Services Division of DOST ITDI, and I will be your host for today. So thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the National Science and Technology Week this week. So from November 23 to November 29, with the theme, Agham at Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan at Kinabukasan. So we are now on the middle of this week-long celebration. Okay, so to formally start our session today, so let us have our national anthem.
Okay, so first things first. So I would like to emphasize our house rules for this afternoon. So for those who are joining us on Zoom and for us to easily identify you, kindly rename your accounts in this format. So company name or affiliation, underscore your full name. And just like this example, so ABC company, underscore Juan A. De La Cruz. Okay, next, keep your audio or microphones on mute during the presentation to eliminate unnecessary background noise. Kindly check your internet connection from time to time to be able to watch the webinar smoothly and avoid any interruptions. So if you just get disconnected, so just reconnect and join in again. So utilize the chat box for any questions or comments with regards to the presentations and prompt us if you have any technical issues. There will be a Q&A at the end of all the presentations. We will try to accommodate all the questions to be answered live later. So this session is being recorded for documentation purposes only. So we adhere to the Data Privacy Act of 2012 or the RA10173. So we strictly implement appropriate security measures and treat all the information we collected from you for this webinar with utmost confidentiality. Okay. So, all right, just another reminder, we are live at the plenary hall of the virtual platform of DOST NSTW 2020, where you can access it via dost-nstw.org and at DOST ITDI official Facebook page at DOST ITDI updates. So please tell your friends and colleagues who failed to register here that they may still view our presentations via this platforms. Okay, so now to give her welcome remarks and overview of the activity, may I call our dear director on the virtual floor. Everyone, please welcome one of our scientists at DOST IDDI, Dr. Annabel V. Briones. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar DOST, ITDI's Technical Services for Industries. For more than 119 years of existence, ITDI has been developing various innovations that sought to help improve the industry sector as well as provide technical services to MSMEs, the local government units, the academic community, and various stakeholders. I am proud and grateful for what the Institute has done for the past decades, how our endeavors have helped shape the science, technology, and innovation landscape of the Philippines. With expertise in the fields of food processing, packaging and labeling, material science, chemicals and energy, environment and biotechnology, metrology and calibration, standards and testing, and technological services. It is ITDI's mission to contribute to making local industries globally competitive. ITDI aims to be the leading industry partner in science, technology, and innovation. As we celebrate the 2020 National Science and Technology Week with the theme, Agham at Teknolohiya, Sandigan ng Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at Kinabukasan, we would like to give you a taste of what ITDI can offer you and your company in terms of technical services. We will be featuring four services for this webinar, namely the Advanced Material Testing Laboratory Services, the Chemical Testing Services, Reference Materials of Metrology in Chemistry, Proficiency Testing Materials of Metrology in Biology. Our highly trained and competent technical experts are ready to serve you. Our laboratories are equipped with state-of-the-art equipment 
and facilities for your testing needs. We hope you learn a lot from this webinar. We at IPDI are happy to serve you more with our R&D and technical services. Good afternoon once again. Thank you and mabuhay. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Annabelle, uh, for those welcoming remarks. So to all our participants, so listen attentively and stay engaged with us. Okay, so before we dive into our presentations, okay, so um, I would like to request you to turn your videos on for a moment. So we have our photo opportunity with all of you. So Sir Adrian Ilarde will do the screenshot. Sir Adrian, please take over. So for our Zoom participants, po, so please turn your videos on. Sir Adrian. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Okay, let's put our big smile on the camera, please. And shooting in three, two, and... Okay, again. One, two, and... Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Okay, so through the decades, as Dr. Annabel have said, so DOST ITDI has been offering its R&D and technical expertise to the industry sector, particularly on testing or analytical services. So for this year's NSTW, DOST ITDI is featuring four of its technical services, namely the various tests offered by the Advanced Device and Material Testing Laboratory or ADMATEL, standards and testing divisions, chemical testing services, and the reference materials being developed by the National Metrology Division's Metrology in Chemistry, or the MIC, and the Metrology in Biology, or the MIB. Okay, so our first speaker will present the Admatel services. He is currently the laboratory head of the Metallurgical and Chemical Laboratory of Admatel. He gained his master's and bachelor's degree in material science and engineering at the Mapua University in Manila. In his bachelor's degree, he majored in semiconductor and electronic devices. He was also a researcher and exchange student in Tamasat University in Thailand under the Faculty of Science Chemistry Department on the study of carbon quantum dots using Karajinan. His research interest focused on nanomaterials, polymers, and metals. In 2019, he was awarded Level 1 Certificate for Digital Radiography and Computed Tomography in Rogers, Minnesota, USA. So please welcome Sir BJT Salon. Um, Sir BJ, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yes, sir. It's clear na po. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the... Hi, again, good afternoon to everyone and the participants, also for our fellow members of the Department of Science and Technology, ITDI, and also my fellow colleagues here in Admaten, or Advanced Advice and Materials Testing Laboratory.
Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Ma'am, I will start sharing na. Yes, po, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon to all. Thank you for attending our webinar highlighting the ITDI's latest testing and technical services as part of DOST's intervention to our local industries, academe, research institutions, and other industry stakeholders. The Advanced Device and Materials Testing Laboratory, or ADMATEL, under the management of ITDI, has been providing advanced failure analysis and materials characterization services since 2012. To date, Admatel has served more than 500 unique companies from various industry sectors. The Admatel's vision is to provide highest quality, accuracy, and precision test services in failure analysis and materials characterization, contributing to the advancement of science and technology in the country. We have developed our capabilities in providing advanced testing services through continuously acquiring testing equipment and services for our industry. To present our newest capabilities, which includes lamella preparation, industrial x-ray testing, and x-ray fluorescence analysis, here is Mr. B.J. Tisalon, our head for the Chemical and Metallurgical Laboratory in Admetel. Let us take advantage of the resources at our disposal to bring about a new dimension to our thinking. By availing of Admetel services, a fully government-owned establishment, you are contributing to its sustainability so that it may continue to serve the people in the future. We hope this experience will provide a wealth of opportunity for all of you. Again, thank you, and we hope to see you and welcome you in Admatel. Hi, so Admatel, Advanced Device and Materials Testing Laboratory. Admatel is a DOST national testing facility which provides advanced failure analysis and materials characterization. This is under ITDI or the Industrial Technology Development Institute. So in 2012, Anmatel was established and started its operation. In the following year, in May 2013, Anmatel was inaugurated by President Benigno S. Aquino III. In 2015, Anmatel was awarded an ISO IEC 17025 Laboratory Accreditation, a general requirement of testing and calibration laboratories, the ISO standard used by testing laboratories and calibration laboratories, in which we assure that our results are globally traceable and acknowledged by different companies and institutions. As of 2020, Admatel carries now the updated version of the ISO IEC 17025 2017 version. So in 2018, Admetel has reached its goal in generating revenue in which as part of business expansion, we added a new equipment and services such as the 3D CP X-ray and the laser decapsulation machine. In Admetel, our mission is to provide the highest quality, accuracy, and precision test service in failure analysis and materials characterization, in which contributes to the advancement of science and technology in the nation. Our vision, or we envision, to enhance relevant visibility locally and regionally, 
and we envision also to provide a much more faster and accurate analysis. Also to achieve a cost-efficient operation and then become a center of excellence in materials testing and failure analysis. Well, we also actively support emerging industries such as the SMEs or the small and medium enterprises. Our team is composed of material science and engineers, chemists, chemical engineers, metallurgical engineers, and physicists. And some of them have advanced graduate degrees from prestigious universities, not only in local, but also in abroad. Our laboratory is a 100K class laboratory, and it has an ESD compliant. The laboratory is subdivided into three, mainly the surface analysis laboratory, which houses the three major equipments and specialized in understanding the surface of vari surface variation of materials that is the outermost microns and even in nanometer scale. Next is the thermal laboratory, which offers tests that determines the thermal properties of materials as being heated, cooled, and exposed to a constant temperature. And my laboratory, the metallurgical and chemical laboratory, performs metallurgical preparation and analysis, also offers decapsulation, visual inspection, non-destructive testing, and radiography. Our services includes imaging and microstructural analysis, surface analysis, compositional analysis, thermal analysis, sample preparation, and radiographic testing. Compositional analysis, we provide accurate identification of sample markups or chemical composition, be it in bulk and in small quantity. We use energy dispersive X-ray or EDS and also an FTIR or Fourier transform infrared spectrometer. In thermal analysis, we help to determine the thermal properties of materials and behavior as it is being heated or cooled. We have three major equipments in this analysis, the differential scanning thermometer, or DSC, simultaneous thermal analyzer, or STA, or commonly known as TGA, the thermomechanical analyzer, or TMA. Sample preparation. We have a high machines that we can do sample preparation, and we assist by utilizing this machine in industrial metals such as the focus iron beam cross-sectioning, metallurgical and mechanical preparation, the iron beam cross-sectioning and polishing, and we do decapsulation either by laser or by chemical preparation. Radiographic testing. This is one of the newest services that we provide. This includes or the conduct of a non-destructive inspection with the use of X-ray machine by viewing desired internal and external structure of a specimen. Our services provide 2D digital radiography, 3D computed tomography x-ray, and various analysis like cracks, voids, and measurements in terms of metrology. Imaging and microstructural analysis. Using cutting edge technology to help obtain better sample, image at a higher magnif magnification allowing precise visual inspection and measurement. We use field emission scanning electron microscope and also our digital optical microscopy in this type of service. While in surface analysis, we perform analytical tests focusing on the outermost layer of the solid material to determine elemental, molecular, and chemical state of the surface. We use Three main equipments. This is the big equipment that we house in this laboratory. The field emission scanning electron microscope or FISM, the OJ electron spectrometer or AES, the time of flight secondary ion mass spectrometer or toxins. One of our newest service is the TEM lamella preparation. With a FISM dual beam configuration, we redefine the standards in high-resolution image and sample preparation. 
this latest service in sample preparation combined with high precision manipulation is a beneficial technique that is accurate, reproducible, and reliable. This technique using FIB technology or focus ion beam in creating a thin layer of sample in which the objective is to create an electron transparent sample that can be viewed using a TEM or our very own STEM. So we will discuss on how we how do we do the lamella preparation. First, we have to deposit a platinum on the surface. Then using a focus ion beam, we cross-section the sample in a micrometer scale. Normally it Excuse me, Sir BJ. Uh, your audio got disconnected again, po. Thank you, sir. Hello, ma'am. How can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, okay no sorry. Thank you. So, I'll just repeat. So one of our newest and exciting new services is the 3D computed tomography x-ray. This is one and only equipment that is available for service here in the Philippines. So the 3D computed tomography is a non-destructive scanning technology that allows you to view and inspect external and internal structure of the object in 3D space. Computed tomography works by taking hundreds and thousands of 2D digital radiography projection around a 360-degree rotation of an object. With a proprietary algorithm, they use to construct 2D projection into a 3D volume, as you can see in your screen. Our machine is capable of having an energy from 10 kV to 225 kV. It can penetrate at least two inches of steel and eight inches of aluminum, while its geometric magnification is greater than 2,000 times magnification, while the maximum system resolution is better than two micrometer. It can carry up to 130 kilograms, and we can analyze samples up to 81 centimeters in diameter and 121 centimeters tall. So as you can see in this video on your screen, this is a 316L stainless steel uh, 3D, 3D, 3D printed uh, dog bone shape sample. So as you can see, we scan the samples and as you can see, you can view the sample in a 3D space. Virtually, you can cross section the samples and do types of analysis like either wall thickness analysis in which you compare the actual sample, for example, your CAD drawing or an existing sample that you can scan. Next is virtually a non-destructive test in which you can do voids and crack analysis. As you can see on the image in the middle, you can see different colors that represent the voids or either the cracks that has inside the sample. And lastly, if you can do internal
Sir BJ, nawala po ulit. Hello po. Yes, I think the internet is very intermittent. Anyway, anyway can you hear me now, ma'am, Rose? Yes, sir. Thank okay, you. So, lastly, the one of our newest services that we acquired this year is the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. This is a handheld X-ray XRF in which a non-destructive analytical method on quantifying element composition of materials or samples in which we measured the secondary X-ray from the sample, also known as fluorescence. Our equipment is a lightweight and mobile thus we can offer on-site testing. So analysis can be finished within minutes and we can give you results. Then again, we can analyze elements from magnesium to uranium. We can analyze samples from solid, liquid, powder, and thus require a little to no sample preparation. Majority of application that we have installed in the machine is detection of metals and metal alloys, restricted materials, or we can commonly known as ROSH analysis, and also spectral analysis in which we can determine element based on the spectral analysis given by the machine. Based on our library given, uh, installed also in our machine, this is an example of a library which is in an American Iron and Steel Institute. So list of uh, elements, uh, list of steels that are provided in our library can be seen in this uh, system. While results given as sh shared on the screen is a sample of a 200, uh, 2205 stainless steel results. As you can see, we can determine the percentage of elements that, in, that are found on the samples and also determines the minimum and maximum allowable amounts based on our library. And that's not all. Actually, we can do a failure uh, uh, pass or fail system in which in conjugate with the rush analysis for the restricted material. As you can see, if you want to determine lead, mercury, or other hazardous elements, we can do that using this handheld XRF. So application covers from PMI or positive materials identification, alloy analysis, precious metal, restricted materials, or commonly, as I said, rush. So how to avail our services? As you can see in the screen, you can email us at services at admatel.com. For the complete list of our services, you can visit our website at www.admatel.com. And you can call us at 837-0461 or either visit us at the OST Compound, General Santos Avenue, Bicuta, Taguig City. Actually, you can Google it out and you can find Admatel in your map. So I hope you experience Admatel, but Wait, there's more. Actually, you have to follow us on our Facebook for our for upcoming events and info. And please like and share. And before I go, Okay, so thank you very much, Sir BJ. Okay, so thank you very much, Sir BJ, for sharing the services of Admatel, specifically the new services. So, okay, let's move on to our next speaker, Po. Okay, so he is the current he is currently the head and technical manager of the inorganic chemistry section chemistry laboratory of the standards and testing division. He is a licensed chemist. He graduated with a degree in chemistry at the Xavier University Ateneo de Cagayan at Cagayan de Oro City. He is currently finishing his master's degree in chemistry at the Institute of Chemistry of the University of the Philippines Diliman. He is an active management and technical assessor of the Philippine Accreditation Bureau or PAB of the Department of Science, uh, 
of the Department of Trade and Industry for the PNS or Philippine National Standards ISO IEC 17025-2017, Accredited Testing Laboratories. So his expertise is on method verification and validation, internal quality control, quality assurance, measurement of uncertainty, and laboratory accreditations. So to present the chemical testing services of DOST ITDI, please welcome Sir Admir Ray Dablio. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Salamat po for joining this uh, webinar of ITDI in presenting our different technical services, which will help you grow uh, if you have your company. Uh, and if you are a researcher, uh, help you with your different uh, researches. So this afternoon, uh, I will be presenting the chemical testing services of the Standards and Testing Division, one of the um, technical services divisions of ITDI DOST. Our mantra is quality life and products through testing. Uh, it, we enjoy quality life and we enjoy quality products and that is through analytical testing. So the standards and testing division is one of the division providing technical services to help the industry to be globally competitive. So we provide test and analysis of various raw materials and even uh, finished products to help you decide on the quality and safety of your uh, materials and products. Because our mantra in ITDI, our business is industry. So uh, the technical services are involved of the national metrology, the standards and test div testing division, and the technological services. So our division, the standards and testing division, STD in short, is composed of three laboratories, the physical and performance testing laboratory, the chemistry laboratory, and the biological laboratory. We are composed of these three distinct laboratories, and each laboratory is technically uh, competent for the type of test it undertakes, which are actually conducted by competent uh, technical staff and support staff using our calibrated equipment, satisfying different test requirements, and done through validated or verified Re internationally recognized test methods. So as of now, as of 2020, we are maintaining a total of 11 laboratory accreditations and recognitions, which is actually a statement of our competence for you to trust us in your testing needs. So we maintain a total of four uh, accreditations under the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Industry for the Philippine Accreditation Bureau for the International Standard ISO IEC 17025. Our biological testing, specifically for our pharma and toxicological testing, uh, they maintain recognitions and accreditations under the Bureau of Animal Industry of the Department of Agriculture and the Philippine Association of Laboratory Animal Science. And it's noteworthy to mention that we are the first among the DOST to be accredited for the testing laboratory since 2005 pa po. Then our chemistry laboratory complies with the Republic Act 10657 or the Republic Act for the chemistry profession and we abide to that law. In fact, we are the 10th laboratory to be granted the license to operate. And we are accredited even in our different co uh, government agencies. So we are accredited under the Department of Health for chemical testing of um, drinking water and in the Food and Drug Administration for the chemical testing and microbiological testing of food and water products. And we contribute to the uh, development of the professional uh, endeavor of our uh, different uh, fields through our uh, Especially, especially for the chemistry, because we are a CPD or the Continuing Professional Development uh, Provider for the Board of Chemistry. And lastly, we are a recognized laboratory of the Department of Trade and Industry Bureau of Philippine Standards 
for their mandatory regulated products, specifically for the mechanical testing of um, UPVC pipes and rubber inner tubes. So those are just uh, some of the evidences of why we, you can trust us with your testing needs, okay? So our laboratories, as mentioned, are composed of three. The first of that is the biological laboratory, wherein we provide entomological testing, microbiological testing, and pharmacological and toxicological testing. So these presented in the slide are the different samples analyzed and the different testing services. But I will not deal specifically on these uh, services because I will focus on our chemical testing services. Next is our physical and performance testing lab. They provide physical, mechanical, and performance testing of different raw materials and even uh, produced products, uh, mostly focused on rubber, rubber-based products, plastics, and plastic-based products. And they are the, the laboratory as well, providing formula of conversion na services for our uh, companies, MSMEs or big companies who are exporting products to different countries uh, in terms of their tax drawbacks and other uh, needs. And for this session, what I will be presenting to you, highlighting to you, are the chemical laboratory testing services. So we provide uh, testing services for chemistry-related materials of the inorganic and organic matrices. So our, we are composed of two sections, the inorganic chemistry section and the organic chemistry section. The difference is in terms of our, the matrices that we handle. If it is inorganic in nature, the matrix, then it is under our inorganic chemistry section. Pag organic naman po yung ating matrix, it is handled by our organic chemistry section. So in the inorganic, we analyze different uh, water and wastewater samples, uh, chemicals which are under the inorganics, the different bleaching powder and solutions, plating solutions, salt, etc. Okay, so mostly these are raw materials for constructions. And in the organic, uh, they are focused on food and feed samples and the organic chemicals like that of the paint, that of the organic chemicals for synthesis and other needs of the industry. And even for the paints and also for the fuels and uh, petroleum products. So I will be presenting specifically yung mga highlight, those which are uh, mostly being, but uh, uh, we have lots of patrons from different industries. So our instrumentations for water chemical analysis, so both for drinking water and even for environmental and wastewater are into mercury analysis for our uh, anions, which are covered or different uh, chemical properties using the UVVs. A spectrophotometer, which we handle fiber optic probes. Then we have our trace metals and minerals using our flame atomic absorption spectrophotometer. And even for arsenic, for the most sensitive method, which is the hydride vapor generation. Okay, And we prepare some samples using our microwave-assisted digestion in the sample preparation. Then we have our atomic fluorescence spectrophotometer for the analysis of total mercury in water, in fact, at the level of the parts per billion. And we have our ion chromatography system for the analysis of different anions, like that of sulfate, phosphate, nitrate, nitrite, fluoride, and chloride. Okay, So we receive a lot of requests for analysis for trace metals because these are really needed by researchers and even by the industry to support regulations, to support their compliance to regulations. So we analyze trace metals and minerals in various water and wastewater samples for safety and quality assessment. And we also help the industry in terms of anions and nutrients since uh, it's part of environmental monitoring to monitor certain anions to check for the quality and to prevent any uh, contamination of the environment. So uh, our focus when it comes to water analysis are really on what are the different regulations in the country when it comes to water and wastewater. So for the case of drinking water, in the, according to the 2017 Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water, 
we can accommodate the nine of the 10 mandatory parameters because the 10 is the microbiological and we are also capable for that. Okay, so we can assure our customers that the 10 mandatory parameters are within our capability. Okay, we also help uh, companies or uh, restaurants, establishments within the Metro Manila contributing to the uh, discharges to the Laguna Lake and even to the Manila Bay. So we have regulations of the affluent standards under the Laguna Lake Development Authority, and we can provide analysis such as uh, five-day biochemical oxygen demand, total suspended solids, pH, and even the oil and grease. Then we also support uh, companies who have, or researchers who have needs when it comes to determining the quality of surface water, environmental water. So the quality of fresh water, like the rivers, the springs, so these are the most common parameters requested, and they are being tested to check if they will classify to the class AA, the, the, the cleanest water when it comes to environmental, or the class D, wherein we can already uh, have some uh, conclusions or indications of certain pollutions or contaminations to bodies of water. Okay. And we even support the industry in terms of their needs for the analysis of effluents before they are being discharged to natural bodies of water. We support our industry when it comes to the analysis of these, uh, these parameters as compliance to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources administrative order, not only for the quality of water, but even for the effluent standards. Okay. And other water and wastewater testing services that we can cater are in terms of dissolved oxygen to know if it is really suitable for aquatic marine life uh, for, for, their, uh, for them to live, or we can support in terms of nitrate in water, which is very critical when it comes to our uh, blood composition in terms of water contamination, and even salinity for those areas which are prone to salt intrusion. Yung mga deep wells, for example, which are near to bodies of water like the seawater. Then, uh, one of the things that we can really assist the industry is in terms of their raw materials for the different construction. So this will compose silica sand, uh, fly ash. We also have uh, the different cement and other related materials, clay and other allied products. So we support them through the analysis, the complete chemical analysis in compliance to different Philippine national standards. For example, the PNS 07 version 2019, which is on Portland cement. So we offer, uh, in fact, complete packages for those customers, MSMEs, companies who will avail of all of this package of the different oxides and even the loss on ignition and the other uh, components of these materials. In fact, uh, we can do some characterizations in terms of the oxides, in terms of the water and acid soluble chloride and sulfate, which are very critical to our industry because presence, high presence of these sulfates and chlorides, the soluble, uh, acid soluble and water soluble can have a detrimental effect to our uh, uh, to our materials. Okay, And we also cater to leachates so that we can check if, in terms of safety, if it will not uh, be going to our bodies of water. So we can check for trace metals, specifically arsenic, mercury, total mercury, lead, and cadmium. The other uh, parameters and other matrices or samples that we can cater in the inorganic chemistry section are soils and sediments and sludges in terms of uh, nutrients, the NPK, or the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. We can also analyze lay ceramics for the different extractable metals, specifically lead and cadmium. We can also support water providers in terms of their compliance to PNS for the PVC pipes, for the water distribution system, specifically for the leachable uh, metals like lead and cadmium. We support industries in terms of their salt uh, testing needs in terms of characterization, in terms of the quality of the salt, moisture, and the different chemical components, or even the impurities. 
We support uh, construction industries for the limestone and related materials, and even for the clay, silica sand, and other related materials. So those are our capabilities for the inorganic chemistry section. Now let's go to our organic chemistry section. We are proud to be assisting the industry when it comes to their needs for characterization of fuels, lubricants, and motor oils. In fact, we can cater to the uh, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and sulfur into of these uh, fuels, and even the heating, heating value. We even have analysis in terms of the physical chemical properties of these fuels and lubricants, and even the motor oils. Also, we can cover uh, proximate analysis to support certain regulations of the uh, fuel and petroleum industry. And also lastly, in terms of not only that we can cater to liquid samples, but even to solid samples or the solid fuels like charcoal, wood, and biomass. So we can have ultimate analysis covering sulfur, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and even the heating value, which is very uh, relevant to the uh, fuel industry, okay? And other allied products that we can accommodate are the waxes and the brake fluids. Next is we cater to the industry, helping the paint industry in the Philippines, since we have lots of manufacturers of paints and users of paints in our country. So we can characterize the different paint products, uh, water-based paints, latex, elastomeric, acrylic polymer, or the, even the co-polymers. So we have uh, physical chemical properties and even on the resistance of these uh, paint products to different solvents, okay? So we can cater to this uh, um, characterization as specified by our different customers, okay? And lastly, we cater to the industry of the food and feeds, okay? Food, beverages, and feeds, not only for uh, product evaluation, but even for registration for nutrition facts under the Food and Drug Administration. So we can cater to the complete nutrition facts analysis, which are mandatory according to the Republic Act on our nutrition labeling, okay? And we can also even have optional tests which uh, can add value to the nutrition facts label of our food manufacturers, catering to the vitamin A, vitamin C, and the minerals, calcium, iron, and zinc. And our newest service is that we can offer our industries, MSMEs, in terms of nutrition facts, okay, in compliance to the Republic Act when it comes to our nutrition labeling, okay? We can also have uh, analysis relevant to the quality and even to the safety of our food products. So we have crude fiber, for example, the permanganate oxidation number for the different uh, oxidation properties, the volatile and non-volatile acids, okay? And even for the fats and oils. So we cater to the physical chemical properties and even for the different characterization needs for these materials, okay? And our, one of our most commonly requested analysis is in terms of food products and feed products and beverages as well, is yung fatty acid profile and the saturated fat analysis. So we, this is done through our gas chromatography system, flame ionization detector. Then we cater into the minerals. These are support to the nutrients of our foods and feeds. So we cater to the uh, minerals in terms of calcium, iron, zinc, manganese, and magnesium, sodium, potassium, and even the trace metals in terms of the uh, safety. So for cadmium, chromium, copper, lead, and even arsenic. In fact, we can offer analysis of arsenic in our rice products or even with the other matrices na relevant po yung mga monitoring of these uh, toxic metals. Okay? Then we... Uh, highlight analysis of our vitamins in foods and feeds using our high-performance liquid chromatography system. So we can cater uh, vitamins like vitamin A or retinol, beta-carotene, vitamin A total, 
vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin B1, and vitamin B6. So our manufacturers, our MSMEs can really be assured that we are complete when it comes to the nutrition needed by our consumers. Okay. Then we also have, in terms of safety, to the preservatives and additives that being added to our food products. So we can go into the nitrite in our meat products, the benzoic and sorbic acid to our uh, preservatives to different products like mango juice or mango products, etc. So we cater to, do, to these uh, parameters. And our latest uh, uh, offering on terms of testing capability is the sulfite. So we know that uh, we have a lot of dried mango products and even other food products which are exported to different countries. When you go to Korea, you see dried mango products from the Philippines. And different countries will have regulations. One of that regulation is the sulfite content, which is a preservative added to our dried products to prolong their shelf life. And there are maximum allowable level in terms of safety, and we cater to that analysis, to that testing needs, so that we can really be assured of the safety of our materials. Okay. Then, last but not the least, is one of our most commonly requested tests then is yung ating pong mga liquors, wines, beers, and juices, wherein we analyze for the acids content, the alcohols for the ethanol, or the, the one that is being uh, really uh, beneficial, and the methanol, which is the toxic one, okay? And even higher alcohols and even the ethyl acetate. So we use this through using our gas chromatograph system refractive index detector, okay? And also another, very, uh, just uh, for the past two years, 2019 and this year, 2020, wherein we have observed really an increase in demand when it comes to uh, analysis of the sugar profile of our different food products, sugar and sugar products. One of that is really in high demand is mga honey samples po natin. So we can analyze for the sugar profile in terms of fructose, glucose, sucrose, maltose, lactose, and uh, that's all, okay? So, but just a disclaimer, we just analyze for the sugar profile, but we cannot check on the purity, okay? The purity will be on the isotope analysis, okay? Thank you so much. So, what do you, uh, what are you going to expect from us, from the standards and testing division, specifically the chemistry laboratory, by year 2021. So we will be facing in, winning in our different uh, parameters for micro, uh, vitamin A in the micro scale extraction method, which is streamlining the process, our folate and folic acid, vitamin D and vitamin K, and even caffeine in different uh, non-halogenated solvent. Okay? So we, that is for our foods and feeds. And in terms of the environmental parameters, we will be handling uh, BTEX or the benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene for possible contamination of different oil products in the water systems. Okay, so last in our, in my presentation, why are you going to trust us when it comes to your testing needs? So our accreditation uh, accreditations and recognitions for all of our laboratories are perfect evidences that we can provide you with accurate and reliable test results. So that is really our commitment to all of our customers. And here at the STD, we promote a safe and friendly environment. So we promote that all of our safe in terms of our customers, in terms of our staff, and in terms of our, all of our visitors in the division, okay? So you can visit that and contact us at our uh, location, STD building po, sa DUST complex. So hopefully, when the situations are becoming okay, you can visit us personally here at STD for your testing needs, okay? These are uh, our locations. If you're using the mobile apps for Grab and uh, Waze so that you can be guided. And please do not forget to visit us in our uh, Facebook page, like our Facebook page so that you can be updated of our sample collection guidelines, testing services offered, especially the latest ones, our divisional announcements and activity updates, or even answer you personally using our chat box for your inquiries, different inquiries. So if you have inquiries, you can contact us through our telephone numbers uh, shown in the slide, our telefax number, 
our email address std at itdi.dwst.gov.ph or visit the website of ITDI so that you can have a full range of all the technical services, R&D services that we can help you here at DUST ITDI. So maraming salamat po. This is Admir W from the Standards and Testing Division, Quality Life and Products Through Testing. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Okay, so thank you, Sir Admer, for discussing the chemical testing services of STD. So napakarami po naming uh, chemical tests na ginagawa, ano po, so for different um, uh, industries. Okay, so now to present the reference materials being developed by the MIC or the Metrology in Chemistry, let us have our third speaker. So she is a licensed chemist and chemical engineer. She acquired her master's and doctorate degree in chemistry at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. Her expertise in metrology in chemistry includes the development of reference materials for food and water. She also conducts proficiency testing schemes for contaminants and toxic metals in food and water. Also, she is involved in the development of chemical sensors for organic compound and contaminants in food based on piezoelectric quartz crystal transducer in combination with molecular imprinting technology and development of solid phase extraction sorbent for histamine, salbutamol, trans fatty acid using uh, molecular imprinted polymer. So last year, she received the 2019 Asia Pacific Metrology Program Award for Developing Economy National Metrology Institute. She also had four international scientific poster awards and 13 international publications and proceedings, aside from her various local and national papers. Ladies and gentlemen, our assistant scientist, Dr. Benilda Ebarbia. Hello, good afternoon everyone. I just, uh, yeah. I'll be sharing with you the reference materials we are doing at the uh, National Meteorology Laboratory of the Philippines of uh, ITDI DOST. This will be the outline of my talk. I'll first introduce you to metrology and chemistry, uh, share with you the brief history of MIC and the uh, international uh, standard unit for the amount of substance, which is the mole, and the objectives of the metrology and chemistry. Then I will be presenting the concerns and needs of our uh, local testing laboratories. Basically, these are reference materials and proficiency testings, which we are going to address and uh, present you the MIC activities at DOST ITDI. So what is metrology in chemistry? When we define metrology, this is the science of uh, measurement. Then applying it to chemistry, then metrology in chemistry would be the science of chemical measurements. So for measurements, we usually are interested with the, uh, with the elements wherein the atomic mass of the element would be very important for quantification of that element. So the metrology and chemistry activities are, are underpinned regionally or globally by the regional metrology organizations around the, the world. And we have uh, about six of them. And the Philippines belong to the Asia Pacific Metrology uh, Program here. And these uh, metrology organizations are governed by the uh, Internal Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. So for the history of meteorology and chemistry, it's, it was only in 1971 that the mole 
unit of amount of substances introduced to the international system of units. And it was only in 1990 where there were strong initiatives aimed of including chemistry in the meteorologic, meteorological framework. And uh, that's the birth of the consultative committee for quantity of matters at BIPM. So, nagkaroon na ng amount of substance sector sa Euromet at sa APNP. And it was only in 2015 wherein uh, biology was included in the consultative committee of meteorology and biology. In the Philippines, uh, metrology and chemistry activities started around 2012 under the program development of the national standards for chemical measurements. This was uh, done uh, at the standards and testing division. It is composed of two projects. Uh, these are concerned with the uh, additives and contaminants in food and the development of uh, certified reference materials for metals in water and chemical proficiency testing. Then uh, in 2017, we were granted the five-year program and uh, three of these projects are for food safety, mainly for food safety. The chemical metrology for organic contaminants in food and water, the chemical metrology for inorganic toxic elements in food and water, and the biological metrology for microorganisms in food. So, uh, in the seven uh, international system of base units, ang interest natin ay ang amount of substance, for which is the mole. And uh, again, it was only in 1971 that this was introduced to the international system of units. So the mole is uh, the SI unit for the amount of substance, and it contains exactly 6.022.14076 times 10 to the 23 elementary entities. This is also equal to the Avogadro's number, and the elementary entities can be an atom, a molecule, an ion, an electron, or any other particle or specified group of particles. Uh, to visualize this amount, let's see for this water, uh, about 18 grams of water would contain about 600 billion trillion individual water molecules. And that is equal to one mole of water. Another example, for one mole containing this amount of entities, we will be needing about 197 grams for gold to have one mole about 4 grams for helium gas. Kung asin naman, we need 58.4 grams stable salt and for oxygen, about 32 grams to have one mole. So the objectives of metrology and chemistry is to improve reliability of chemical measurement results to be uh, globally com comparable with other measurements and establish the traceability uh, of analytical results. We also aim that uh, for this uh, once tested once accepted everywhere. Pag tinest mo dito sa Pilipinas, kahit pa sa Paris, uh, it will be of the same value. So it is also our aim to disseminate the expertise and knowledge on metrology and chemistry through seminars and workshops. So uh, just to show you the difference of physical quantities for metrology and chemistry, so physical quantities where we are observing the length, mass, and volume, we can uh, directly measure the length, the mass, or volume. But in chemical quantities, we need to study the composition, the properties, and behavior of matter because this will affect the quantitation or quantification that we are doing for the for a specific analyte. So, and also we need to maintain traceability as well as uh, we are maintaining traceability in physical quantities. Traceability is defined as the property of uh, measurement of the value of standards whereby it can be related to stated references, usually uh, national or international, through an unbroken chain of comparison or all having stated uncertainties. 
in simple terms, uh, all testing should be have a common point of reference. Uh, a testing laboratory, say uh, measure lead about five ppm, could should be the same as the uh, measurement of other laboratories within a country or within uh, internationally by other tested by other laboratories. So they have one common point of reference. So for metrology and chemistry, the measurements has to be traceable. And measurement results of industry or testing laboratories has to be uh, traceable to the calibration solutions or reference materials and then to the uh, CRMs produced by the National Metrology Institute and then to the mold. So this is the traceability chain for the uh, metrology in chemistry. So uh, who are doing the measurements for of chemical measurements? Of course, our uh, chemical testing laboratories and their concerns are mainly on the production of good chemical analysis results so that they could provide uh, information to customers, control industrial uh, production, protect public health, support regulatory processes, and provide data for future legislation. However, our local testing laboratories have some, some needs. They need uh, sound national standards, and this includes the reference methods, the reference materials, proficiency testing that they could participate to assess their performance. They also need good dissemination process to users, uh, extensive and pers pervasive quality systems and education and training program for users. So what is a uh, reference method? This reference method are used, are methods used to provide reference value for the reference materials. And uh, they, are, they have traceability of the chemical measurements to the international system of units. Usually they are produced uh, or achieved through the use of primary direct methods like gravimetry, typerimetry, colorimetry, or the pressing point depression. And others are using the primary ratio, ratio method wherein isotope uh, dilution is uh, combined with uh, mass spectroscopy and uh, these are candidate uh, primary methods like the LCMF, liquid chromatography mass spec, MSMS, the GCMSMS, and ICPMS. So when we talk of reference materials, these are materials produced and characterized to be sufficiently homogeneous and stable and uh, with specified properties that is fit for its intended use in measurement. Pag sinabi naman natin certified reference material or the CRM, may, it is accompanied by a document uh, issued by an authoritative body and providing one or more specified reference values with associated uncertainties and traceabilities. So under ISO IEC 17025, uh, this is still the old version, uh, it is stated that uh, regular use of certified materials is needed and also participation in international laboratory comparison is needed in assuring the quality of test and calibration results. Thus, uh, the MIC is producing, uh, uh, is aiming to produce certified reference materials for uh, internal quality control and uh, provision of uh, proficiency testing programs for the local testing laboratories. So it is in 7.7.1 7 in uh, uh, the 7025-2017 version uh, calling for the uh, assurance for quality of test and calibration results. So why use, CR, why use RMs? Because uh, these RMs can be used for the validation of analytical procedures where you can evaluate the precision accuracy of the method. It can also be used in interlaboratory comparisons, in the estimation of measurement uncertainty of measurements, and documenting the traceability, the calibration of instruments, and 
internal quality control as well as uh, external quality assurance or it can be used for proficiency testing schemes. So uh, for ISO 1702 by requirements, which is the aim of every chemical testing laboratories, uh, we have uh, for fulfilling the requirements, uh, these preconditions must be uh, achieved. The use of reference materials and the use of validated methods. What about proficiency testing scheme? Why is participation important in this proficiency testing? Uh, you can define proficiency testing as, uh, as inter-laboratory comparisons that are organized regularly to assess the performance of analytical, analytical laboratories and the competence of the analytical personnel. So it is by participating in proficiency testing schemes that the performance of the laboratory is assessed as well as the competence of the person. So just to show you an example how a PT scheme is uh, done, a PT provider could provide uh, a material to uh, a group of testing laboratories and then uh, they will analyze and, the, and prepare report and submit it to the PT provider and the PT, PT PT provider would uh, analyze the results and give it back to them uh, where the laboratories can uh, see or uh, their performance as provided by the PT provider. If it's good if they have a satisfactory performance, but if their performance are questionable and uh, unsatisfactory, they need to conduct root cause analysis. So this is a typical say score plot of participating laboratories for a PT scheme. As I have said, you can, uh, from a say score of uh, equal or less than two, it is a satisfactory performance. Between two and three, it will be a questionable performance and more than three, unsatisfactory performance. So uh, PT providers could be a commercial or uh, it could come from other provider. And the result would be based on consensus value. PT provider could also be a National Metrology Institute or a designated institute for metrology and chemistry, wherein the uh, PT, PT assigned value is based on the reference value. And we can call these uh, PTs as accuracy-based PTs. And one important characteristic of PT, uh, accuracy-based PT is their traceability to uh, SI. And also let's note that the result of consensus value is not necessarily identical with the true value, thus the possibility of giving wrong assessment to our laboratories. So uh, to underpin our capability for providing reference value, we continuously participate in international pilot and key comparisons provided by the regional meteorology institutes and even by the BIPM. And these are some of our uh, participation with uh, international comparisons. So currently, the MIC activities of DOST basically involve method development and validation of uh, these methods uh, using the routine methods are uh, used by the testing laboratories, and then we uh, also validate it using gravimetric approach. We also uh, validate our methods using the higher order method wherein the, there is a combination of the isotope uh, dilution techniques with the mass spectroscopy and uh, method validation of our CRMs, uh, both for matrix and pure standards. We also prepare a uh, candidate reference material. So how do we do it? We select the material and conduct preliminary assessment of the homogeneity and stability of the potential material. We also select the packaging material to be used. And once we have found it to be homogeneous and stable, then we will prepare a new batch of the candidate reference material and again conduct homogeneity and stability studies, and later the uh, reference value assignment. 
And uh, for reference value assignment, what we use in the lab is, uh, as I have said, is the isotope based mass spectroscopy. Uh, not only that, but we still cross check our uh, results by using gravimetric sample for analytical measurements using HPLC or GC or the graphite furnace, AAS, ICPOS, and others. So uh, basically, we conduct two methods, one using isotope-based mass spectroscopy and cross-check it using gravimetric uh, sample preparation with our analytical instruments. So these are some of our uh, matrix that we could provide our uh, chemical testing laboratories. These are some of the uh, uh, matrix uh, reference materials that we have developed, then sodic acid in banana ketchup, Histamine and dried peas, salbutamol in meat. We have also uh, pure benzoic acid and histamine dihydrochloride, and the benzoic acid in mango juice and chlorpyric pentol in mango. For the uh, inorganic toxic elements, these are some of the finished uh, products. We have lead, cadmium, copper, in, and iron in drinking water, calcium, magnesium, and zinc in drinking water, the sulfide in dried mango. We have calibration solutions for copper, magnesium, zinc, and cadmium. So, uh, reference materials under development are listed in this slide. We're still uh, doing a lot for our chemists, for our local testing laboratories. So, another uh, activity that the uh, MIC is conducting is as I had said, the conduct of accuracy-based PT schemes. So uh, we continuously uh, provide PT schemes to our uh, local testing laboratories uh, once we develop the reference material uh, and is available for uh, PT schemes. So uh, we also conduct uh, pre- and post-PT workshops for our participants to provide and guide them on how to uh, get uh, the results that is expected from them using their own methods. And uh, if face-to-face -face is not available, we are also conducting this, uh, like this one, a web webinar to uh, conduct the post-PT workshop. So our, we would like to use this opportunity to invite you to uh, join at the proficiency test that we that we will offer by 2021. This is benzoic acid in mango juice, histamine in cantuna, and chlorpyrifos and pentoid in mango, and cypermetrin in mango. Also for uh, inorganic uh, RMs, we have arsenic and mercury in drinking water, cobalt manganese nickel in drinking water. Soon we have we will be having uh, RMs for arsenic cadmium, mercury and lead in tuna, arsenic cadmium lead in rice, sulfite in desiccated coconut and uh, also arsenic cadmium mercury and lead in sugar cane. Hopefully uh, we can uh, finish the preparation of these uh, reference materials and, and provide them as your PT materials, and you can contact us at uh, nml.micpt at gmail.com. So uh, to summarize, the activities of ethnology and chemistry involve uh, validation of methods, the development of matrix reference materials, or uh, pure substance RM and calibration solutions, the establishment of traceability, uh, so the CRMs that we are using that are coming from other NMIs or developed by the NML. The conduct of the proficiency testing uh, that are uh, accuracy based. We are also aiming to be internationally accredited and we are working towards it. And uh, so we have some measurement uncertainty procedures. So all in all, we are developing all these activities for the country. Uh, to provide and improve the quality of life of the Filipino people. With this, we would like to acknowledge the Department of Science and Technology for the support given 
to this program and the, uh, also to the uh, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development for the support for this project. So thank you and uh, hope you, you learn something from the Metrology and Chemistry of the National Metrology Laboratory of ITDI DOST. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Beng, for sharing about the MIC and those information on the reference materials being developed by the MIC. So we are now on our final speaker for this webinar. So to discuss the proficiency test material being developed by the Metrology in Biology of ITDI, let us now listen to our next speaker. So he is the technical manager of the Microbiology Laboratory of the Standards and Testing Division of IDDI. He is involved in food microbiological testing and other industrial products for the past 15 years. He is also a technical assessor of the Philippine Accreditation Bureau, or PAB, and technical committee member on laboratory accreditation, food and water devices standards. He is the project leader of the Biological Metrology for Microorganisms in Food under the National Metrology Program. So let's give it up for Mr. Marlon Aguinaldo. Okay, good afternoon. So I will be discussing about uh, proficiency test schemes in biological metrology, specifically on microbiological measurements. So hopefully by the end of the presentation, we will learn something about PT schemes, how we conduct it, and how we prepare materials. I have also included a brief introduction on the biological met metrology to help us familiarize with it. So the ITDI is currently developing its capabilities on biological metrology, on microbiological measurements. So this is being carried out under the National Metrology uh, Laboratory through the DOSC program, enhancement of the competence and capabilities of the NML of the Philippines. So it is composed of four projects and is focused on developing capabilities for chemical and biological metrology and strengthening, and strengthening of the physical metrology since it is already established. It also, it also aims to integrate all metrological activity under the National Metrology Laboratory of the Philippines. So the program leader for this is Dr. Benilda Ibarria. So what is biological metrology? So from the root word bios, meaning life, so I think biology natin. So this could be relating to living organisms or relating to the byproducts from living organisms, or this could be relating to a process. So metrology, as we all know, is the science of measurement. So we are very, fam very familiar with physical measurements such as length, temperature, and time. However, there is what we call biological measurements. So based on the presentation of Dr. Ibarvia, so the metrological concepts in biology were only introduced in 2015 officially. But actually, the biological measurements that we have done for uh, over centuries, of siguro. So to summarize, biological metrology is the study of measurement of various biological analytes. So this could be microorganisms, red blood cells, and biological activities. So it's, uh, it could be called metrology and biology, and in short, biomet. So what are the applications natin for uh, biometrology? So this could be involved in animal testing. So we utilize animals for the observation of reactions to substances, such as toxicity testing or allergen allergenicity testing. So hematological testing. So when we go to uh, clinical laboratories, we have our uh, blood tested for red blood cell count or white blood cell count. And also for molecular testing for the identification of microorganisms and detection of viruses. So biological measurements are important in food safety and agriculture. So we test foods for the presence of microorganisms generally for public safety. 
for the medical and clinical application. So we test biological samples such as blood, synovial fluids for disease diagnosis and management. And also in trade, it is important in trade. For example, we test our food products in, to improve the quality and competency of our locally produced uh, products para ito ay maging globally competitive. So in terms of scope, so what are the analytes being measured in biometrology? So biology in general is such a diverse branch of science. Generally, these analytes are grouped into four. So we have nucleic acids. So this involves our DNA and RNA, mostly used in molecular testing. So we have proteins, which are complex molecules. So they have significance in medicine, in food So we have cells. So this involves cell counting, such as red blood cells, CD4 cell counts in HIV management. So under cells, we have uh, the microbial measurements, which is the focus of our uh, project and development. So, sabi nga kanina, biological metrology is uh, one of the youngest fields in metrology and still at the developing stage. It still has some technical issues. So, this would include uh, biological analytes or large and complex molecules. So because of these, some are not readily quantifiable compared to chemical analytes. So some units of measurements are not yet traceable to the SI, such as yung ating microbiological measurements. So meron din tayong issue when it, term, when it comes to the stability of biological materials. So however, current and updated methods should be carried out to provide the highest form of traceability. So in terms of microbiology, ang highest forms of traceability natin would be on the identification of microorganisms. So why are we establishing this capability on biometrology, specifically on microbial measurements? So based on ISO IEC 7025, laboratories are required to participate in proficiency test schemes and use reference materials. Currently, there are more than 50 food microbiological testing laboratories accredited by the Philippine Accreditation Bureau. However, we only have two PD providers in the country, and this is for, for chemical testing. So this DOSC has recognized this gap, this gap, hence we are developing this capability. So currently, ang naging scenario natin is yung local laboratories natin uh, purchase their reference material and participate in international proficiency testing schemes. So what is a reference material? So this is a material sufficiently homogeneous, meaning there is no significant difference in the concentration of our analytes and stable, which means that there is no significant difference on the concentration of the analytes over a period of time at a given storage condition, and that the material is fit for, it, for its intended use in the examination of its nominal, nominal properties. So saan saan ba natin ginagamit yung ating RMs? So this could be used by the laboratory for various activities in the laboratory, such as method development, method validation or verification. So this could be used for quality control activities of the laboratory. And of course, this could be used for interlaboratory comparisons or PT schemes. So what is proficiency testing? So by definition from ISO 17043, this is the evaluation of a laboratory's performance against pre-established criteria by means of interlaboratory comparison. So from ISO 22117, so PT schemes for microbiology laboratories are used to evaluate the laboratory's performance, trueness, and sometimes precision. It is evaluating the laboratory performance using the data generated from other participants of the interlaboratory comparison study. So, this 
So PT is very useful for the laboratory. So aside from fulfilling the requirements of the ISO IEC 17025 standard, it is a form of external quality assessment. It is an effective tool to ensure laboratory confidence as this could provide insight to the laboratory's competence. The performance of the laboratory is being evaluated by, a, by an independent body. It gives the laboratory confidence in conducting specific tests. However, there are, there are limitations in participating through PT schemes. It should not be used by the laboratory to substitute or replace other components of the quality system and the QC program. It is just one component of the QC program. So internal quality control should still be done on a regular basis. So this would include the use of control cultures, intermediate checking, equipment calibration, and so on. So how does a PT, PT scheme operate? So it all starts with the PT provider. So the Biomet laboratory acts as the PT provider. Basically, it will produce PT materials and distribute it to participating laboratories. This will include relevant information such as handling, reporting, and deadline on the submission of results. In turn, the participating laboratories will analyze the samples and submit the results back to the PT provider. So the PT, the PT provider is tasked to evaluate and assess the results. A report is given to each participating laboratory, which contains the performance of the laboratory. So this is an example of a PT scheme we have conducted as part of our research and development. So for uh, we use uh, aerobic peat count in flour. So we, we utilize the naturally occurring microorganisms from the flour sample and the analysis to be conducted is aerobic plate count. So aerobic plate count is a common microbiological uh, analysis. So the general workflow for this that we followed for the production of the PT material includes uh, the batch production. So we did initial studies to optimize the processing condition, and we established the homogeneity and the stability of our analyte. So for the bulk production, we sifted and mixed the first samples to achieve a homogeneous mixture. So these were packed in containers. So we conducted random sampling to designate charts intended for homogeneity, stability testing, and for those that we will be distributing to our participants. So for this batch of PT material, so this is the result of our homogeneity. So it is important that there is no significant difference between the containers that we distributed amongst our participating laboratory. So based on the results of our, of our homogeneity test, we were able to achieve homogeneity. So we could see that the F value is less than the F typical value so yung computations nito and the standard is based on ISO guide 35. So we have a homogeneous PT material. So the next thing we did was to conduct stability testing. So this is the result of our stability test. So ang, kailangan, ang requirement dito is there should be no significant difference on our uh, concentration of our analytes over a period of time. So based on linear regression analysis, the PT material was stable up to 28 days at 30 degrees centigrade uh, storage. Uh, so aside from the 30 degrees centigrade storage, we also conducted stability of our PT material uh, at four degrees storage. So for this uh, storage condition, we were able to achieve stability up to 120 days. So we wanted to continue the testing. However, uh, wala na kaming samples for testing. So hanggang 120 days lang yung aming na-achieve for this. So the evaluation of results is conducted after the participating laboratories have submitted their results. So we compute for the z-scores. So I will not go uh, into the details of the computation, but basically the participating laboratory, laboratory will receive a report from us with a computed z-score. So the z-score is interpreted as follows. So a C-score of less than 2 is considered satisfactory. So those between 2 and 3.0 is considered questionable. And the C-scores above 3 is uh, interpreted as unsatisfactory. So this is an example of a C-score plot showing the performance of the laboratories. 
So the participants, the participants for this scheme has z scores less than two or within plus or minus two, which is uh, satisfactory. So what do laboratories need to do if they receive questionable or unsatisfactory results? So laboratories would need to investigate the root cause and implement corrective actions. It could be either coming from various reasons. This could be due to the agents. So pwedeng expired yung the agents, equipment, hindi na calibrate yung equipment, or may mali sa techniques ng analyst, or even sa computation ng ating results. So currently, we are developing uh, the following uh, PT materials. So hopefully, we will be able to uh, conduct PT schemes uh, in the coming year. So we are developing uh, four types of uh, PT materials. So these are mainly focused on seafood products. So ito yung mga products na ina-export ng country natin. So this would include salmonella, total coliform count, E. coli count, and aerobic plate count in milkfish and uh, octopus. So the main difference no ating did develop a TT material against our uh, previous uh, flower sample that dynamic natin sa ating TT scheme is uh, this time we will be spiking our food sample, uh, food matrices with microbial is isolates that has been fully characterized and identified using both automated biochemical and molecular identification. So we will be employing preservation techniques for microorganisms in the food matrix. And also we will try to develop a multi-analyte uh, PT material. So meaning yung isang PT material natin will be composed of several types of microorganisms. So with that, ito po yung aking naging reference for my uh, presentation. And then for inquiries, so you may contact us through these uh, channels. And uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Sir Marlon. So now that concludes the presentations for today. So our speakers are now, are now ready to answer your queries. So please type in your questions at the chat box so we can address it po. So actually there is one question from our Facebook page a while ago. So she is uh, Miss Mylin Corpus from Echaga Isabella. So I think the question is for Sir Admir. Okay, so how to send samples in your agency in case we want to have analysis in our products? Uh, thank you so much for, for that question. Uh, you can actually utilize what we call as the one lab network. So you can go po sa nearest na DOST, uh, regional, uh, regional office, or even in their yung pinakamalapit po na provincial science and technology center of the UST at your province po. So you, they are trained uh, to receive your sample and they will be facilitating the transport of your sample from your region papunta po that dito po sa amin, sa amin laboratory. But of course, with prior communication to check the validity of the sample as well as yung, uh, if, if the samples are perishable so that we can check po kung uh, in terms of the time frame of the delivery or the transport of sample. Po. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Admir. So how about the others? Po? So if you have any questions, just key in po sa ating chat box. So we will wait for a while. Po. So baka may nagtatype pa po sa kanila. Ano po, sirs and ma'am? Okay, po. so we encourage everyone to uh, ask questions. So if there are any clarifications or queries po regarding the presentations made by our speakers, so please do so because this is a very good opportunity for you to interact with them directly. Okay, so also if you have other questions that you may uh, think about later, so you can still send it to us, maybe through our Facebook page. Also, our laboratories have their own Facebook page as well, and we will all address your queries. So thank you, everyone. Any questions from our participants in Zoom or in FB Live? 
So our speakers po are ready to answer your questions. Okay, so I think wala pa pong nagtatanong. <laughs> Okay, so there's one question from the chat box. So from um, Sir Jodel Galapon. So how about in crude extraction? How can we send the materials for extraction? Uh, thank you so much for that question. Po. Um, for crude extraction, po, uh, for example, if you're doing analysis for phytochemical, we have uh, a package for the crude extraction. But if the crude extraction that you will be needing is also to be, uh, to be used in other parts of your research, you can contact po our chemicals and energy division. They have expertise on uh, extraction of different components. Uh, phytochemicals or even essential oils of the different materials. So they will guide you on the specific amount of sample. So for this case, you can channel your inquiry po sa aming TSD through the group of Miss Rose, uh, through their contact details, the TSD uh, presented a while ago or later in this webinar, so that they can guide you pa papunta po sa uh, CED, Chemicals Energy Division po namin, specifically their pharmaceutical section po. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sir Admer. So later, we will share the contact details po of the Technological Services Division for your information and reference. Okay, any more question po? Um... As yun sir, nagdagdag po siya. So for, for research purposes daw po. So he is from DepEd Manila Senior High School. Uh, yes po. Uh, for phytochemical po namin, if the, the extraction is solely for the testing na gagawin po namin, uh, it's, uh, the phytochemical test is worth uh, 600 and the uh, extraction is worth 158 pesos. But if, as what I've mentioned, kung meron pong uh, additional na needed pa kayo na from the extraction, then it will be suitable that you will proceed to our chemicals and energy division so that the extracts uh, that will be produced are enough not only for testing but even for your other research activities. And this also holds true for the extractions needed by our microbiological section for their antimicrobial and antifungal activities na testing capabilities. But also uh, for if you will be needing extracts for essential oils po talaga, para magpapatest po kayo for essential oil components in our laboratory, we don't conduct extraction, but it is solely conducted po by our pharmaceutical section of the Chemicals Energy Division. Thank you so much, Bob. Okay, thank you, Sir Admer. Any more questions po from our participants? Okay, so maybe also Sir BJ, uh, can you share to our participants how they can avail the services of Admatel, lalo na po yung mga taga-malayo? So paano po kaya nila ma-avail ang services natin? Hi, thank you, Ma'am, Ms. Rosa. Actually, in Admatel, you can contact us directly in our Facebook page. And also, you can uh, email us at services at admatel.com. Possibly, if you are far away from uh, NCR or Luzon, you can send out the samples by any of the courier available here in the Philippines. And just give us a call or an email before you send the samples. Actually, before anything else, we provide a free consultation on the services that we provide. And as much as possible, no, we recommend tests not only in our laboratory, but also in ITDI or in DOSD. Okay, so thank you, Sir BJ. So we are just one call away or one uh, message away from everyone. So lalo na po ngayon, so we are actually on a virtual mode because of the pandemic. So it's very easy to communicate using our latest technologies. Okay, so any more questions po? So I think... 
uh, wala na po tayong question. So if there is uh, something that comes up to your mind po to ask later on, so again, you can contact us through our uh, numbers later that I will share. Okay, so uh, before we finally end, okay, so let us hear the closing remarks okay, from our officer in charge of the Office of the Deputy Director for Administrative and Technical Services of DOST ITDI. So she is also the Chief of the Planning and Management Information Systems Division. So please welcome Dr. Zoraida V. Ang. Thank you, Rose. Kita ba ako? Yes, ma'am. Okay na po. Okay, kita na ako. Okay, thank you, Rose. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of our very good director, uh, Dr. Annabel uh, Vibriones, we would like to thank everyone who attended this afternoon's webinar. Uh, we hope that you have learned significantly from the topics presented covering our ADMATEL services, the chemical testing lab uh, services of our standards and testing division, the reference materials under our metrology in chemistry, and the proficiency uh, testing materials of our metrology in biology. We are optimistic that our technical services will be able to help you in your operational requirements, specifically on testing, food safety, and failure analysis. Now, while we have presented only uh, these four technical services, these are just a tip of the iceberg, so to speak. The ITDI is offering so much more to the different sectors of our economy. For almost 120 years, take note, 120 years na po kami, okay? The DOST ITDI has been your partner in providing for your scientific and technological products and services requirements. These range from food, packaging, chemicals, energy, environment, biotechnology, and material science, to metrology and calibration, technology transfer and training, standards and testing, to name a few. Through your continuous patronage, we would like to give you assurance that we will also continue to give you the general public in general, no? appropriate and quality services, particularly in your business endeavors and for the advancement of our science, technology, and innovation. As our slogan goes, our business is industry. With that, thank you once again and stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Da, for that closing remarks. Okay, so here are our contact details. So feel free to get engaged with us to know more of our programs and services by writing us a letter addressed to our director, Dr. Annabel V. Briones, and course it through the Technological Services Division. So you may contact us through these telephone and mobile numbers or send us an email and we will direct you to the division's concern for your requests and inquiries. So please like and follow our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So you may take a screenshot for your reference later. Okay, so also your opinions and comments are valuable to us. So we would like to know your insights in our pre presentations earlier. So kindly fill out the feedback or evaluation form. So the link will be given in the chat box. And for those who are watching us live at the virtual plenary hall, you can access the evaluation form at the lower left portion of your screens. And it will also be sent through the Facebook comment section for our FB Live viewers. Okay, so in behalf of the whole ITDI community, we would like to thank you once again for your time today. We hope that you join the rest of the webinars to be presented by other DOST agencies in celebration of the National Science and Technology Week until November 29, 2020. Mabuhay po tayong lahat, mga kaagham. Good afternoon and stay safe.
Tumitilaok na ang manok Hudyat na ng pagpasok Paglilingkod na walang kapalit Sa bayan ng aming hati Tara na, kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulo Ating abutin ang pangarap ni Juan Sa pamamagitan ng agham Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tara na, sama-sama Itaguyan ang siyensya Maayos na bukas para sa Pilipinas Hamon ay haharapin Mahirap man ay kakayanin Sa pinagsamang lakas at galing Tagumpay ay mararating Tara na kaibigan Huwag kang magpaiwan Gamitin ang dunong bansa ay susulo Ating abutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na Tingabutin ang pangarap iwan Sa pamamagitan na Pangarap kong magkaroon ng mabilis at murang transportasyon para sa lahat. Pangarap kong masagot ang malnutrisyon. Pangarap ko pong magkaroon ng effective communication means for emergency. Pangarap kong ma-maximize yung renewable energy source and to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Pangarap ko pong maging scientist. Yung dao simula na Humanda sabay-sabay akyat Hawak kamay tayo'y ang ating lipat Lipat Aking nabutin ang pangarap ni Juan Sa pamamagitan ng aghag Ang kaunlaran ay makakamtan Kung lahat magtutulungan Tell me.